Greetings and welcome to a new video about a DC shunt motor example. This will be our example number five. In this example, we'll look at another problem again and discuss the required calculations step by step. So let's look at the example. What we have is the following situation. We have a DC shunt motor and it requires a terminal voltage of 600 volts. The motor constant is given by this expression. So it is 0.45 times the field current. In addition, the DC shunt motor has a field resistance of 120 ohms and an armature resistance of 600 milli ohms. That's the given. Okay, what is required? Calculate the available torque of the motor at starting. Okay, and the following is repeat A if there is a 20 ohms of resistor connected in series with your armature part of the DC shunt motor. So. Let's look at the solutions. How do we actually work this out? Now, if we of course want to calculate this in great detail, we also look at the model. So this will be our model of our DC shunt motor again. This is the field part, this is the armature part, and this is the applied voltage, this is the terminal voltage. Now, this is now our armature resistance, this is our field resistance, and in the question B, we will also place here in series uh, additional resistors of 20 ohms. Now, in the first case, I need to calculate the torque, available torque, at start. So, what is actually the equation for the torque also that is required in this exercise? But let's summarize what we have. This is the given information. The terminal voltage, again, the motor constant, as a function of the field current, the field resistance, and also the arm resistance. All right. So, let's first look at the starting torque. Starting torque, we know at starting, just at the beginning of your motor, the motor speed will be zero. That means the back EMF here is also zero. Why actually? Because if you look at this formula, this says actually the speed of this rotation, of this shaft, will of course create your back, EM, back EMF voltage also. So due to the back EMF voltage, you will create a rotation speed. So if there is no rotation, or at start, there's also no back EMF. So that's the condition for having the back EMF of zero volts. So that is at starting. Now, if I look at the armature part, just looking here, I can again set up an equation using Kirchhoff voltage law. This voltage, the terminal voltage will be across the three elements, across the resistor of the armature, the inductor, and also the back EMF. That's actually shown here, so in the summation. But we know this will go, we already discussed this, and this will go because we are now working in a DC system, because the current flowing here is the DC, and the reactance of our inductor LA will be zero, so that will be also gone. So only left is the second term on the right hand side of the equation. So you can simplify this very nicely in this form. So the armature current will be then the terminal voltage over the armature resistance. So we have the necessary values, 600 for the terminal voltage, 0 0.600 ohms for the armature resistance, and that will give you 1000 amperes. That's for the armature part. You might ask why we need this. The armature current is required to able to calculate the torque, because you can see later on that the torque is related to the armature current, also the motor constant. Let's also do the field. You can also apply Kirchhoff voltage law for this field part. Again, this voltage is across these two elements. And again, the field currents are shown here. In this case, again, the reactance of this field inductance will be zero because it is DC. And this will result in a more simplified expression. Again, the field current will be then the terminal voltage over that RF, which is the field resistance. Now we have also here the necessary information, 600 and over 120 we'll get five amperes. That's for the field current. Okay, then what we get is the following. This is what we have given. This is just the information in the exercise that the motor constant is 0 0.45 times the field current. Now we know the field current, substitute the values, you will get 2.25 Weber's just the constant now. So we know the exact value now for our motor constant. And we can use that, of course, later on. Now, as already said, the torque in general is related to the armature current in this form. 
So the armature current times the motor constant will give you the torque. That's always the case. In this case, we of course look at the starting torque. And we have now the given starting current for the armature. And we also have the motor constant. So we can just substitute the values, you will get now 2250 newton meters. That's actually for question A. Okay. Now let's also do that. Just repeat actually question A, but in this case, we have a resistor here of 20 ohms. That means effectively that your armature resistance will increase by 20 ohms. So you will get 20.6 ohms here as your effective resistance. Okay, now start the dog again with the 20 ohms in series with the armature part. We have again the armature. And again, this, this is of course, uh, that the back EMF is gone and also the part of the reactance of this inductor is gone. So we have only this one and you can see we have added now a new resistor, I just call it R of X, that's the 20 ohms. So if I now work it out and again calculate the new armature current, because this current is only for the first case, then we have the following situation and you can see 600 over 20.6, you will get 29.1 amperes. You can see the decrease in the current, so we go from 1000 all the way to approximately 29 amperes. Okay, that's for this. We of course need that again in this equation. Now the field, that won't change. The field equation is again this, and also the field current is given by this. So if I now work it out, of course this is gone. We have this, and the field is again just five amperes. So the field current won't change if you add here a resistor. So that means again, your constant also will not change because it is already said as a constant. So since the field is not changing, that motor constant will not change. So we can use again this value in this equation for your starting torque. So we can say the starting torque again the motor constant times the new value of your armature current substitute the values you will get 65.9 65.5 I mean newton meters. So you decrease your torque a lot if you place a series resistor here. So what we learn actually in this example is that adding or having a larger armature resistance actually in effect will decrease your starting torque. Now what kind of effect will this have for your system? Now in order to start a motor you require a minimum starting torque. Now by having a larger armature resistance you decrease your torque here and that maybe cause a problem to able to start your motor. So that is actually the case here. So we can see that the effect, what the effect is of having a serial resistor here. Of course, you can have more inductance, but that won't have effect at DC. All right, this is now for example number five about a situation where we see also the what the effect is of an additional uh, component, of additional uh, um, element here in the armature part on our starting torque. Again, if you have any questions about this exercise, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks again and see you next time in another video.